<clears throat> Hello, and thank you for watching Word from Wise, Bus Stories, Flowers in the Street. This is episode 19. I call this one Black and Blue Baby. So it's been a many months since I've told stories. Black and Blue Baby is the reason why. Black and Blue Baby is a sad story for me. I'm going to try very hard not to cry. <laughs> okay. Well, I was doing line 72, line 72, la linea 72, and I was going through felony flats. And the bus was kind of medium filled, not packed, but not empty. You know, maybe 20, 30, 40 people on the bus. And, um, this uh, young white lady gets on the bus. Gets on the bus. She has shoulder length, bleach blonde hair, kind of heavy set, maybe early twenties, and she has a little baby boy with her who's half black. Looks like her. Was that's her son? She had her a toddler. He's like he's about two years old, maybe three, between two and three, somewhere around there. And uh, he had this big, beautiful, curly brown afro. And these hazel green eyes, and it was real thick, nappy afro. It was curly. It was beautiful. And uh, I will never forget that baby as long as I live, because he had a whole bunch of bruises on his forehead. He had like a big, like a big bump here, like a big, you know, one of those egg shaped, egg shaped bump on his head. And he had like bruise on his arm, and and uh, he had some kind of cast on or, or or some kind of brace on his left hand and he was all scuffed up and just roughed up and and and, and he and uh, he wasn't dressed it was kind of cold outside it was close to christmas and uh, she was striking up a conversation with me she sat on the very first seat in the in the bus where the old ladies the elder elderly seating section is for honored citizen i should say not just elderly also people who are disabled citizens sit in the uh honored citizen seating area as well but she picks the first seat that's turned sideways that's near the driver. And uh, she told me that um, she just came from her mom's house. Excuse me. She told me she just came from her mom's house. And this was like Christmas Eve. Excuse me. This was like Christmas Eve. And uh, the little baby boy had three or four coloring books in, on his lap in this little plastic bag from the Dollar Tree and he had a little toddler cup with the you know the little cup with the little spout with the little three holes in it he had one of those little cups and uh so he's sitting next to her and he's looking at the coloring book and uh she was talking about her mom and how her mom doesn't like that she had a baby by a black man and and I'm listening. I was like, oh, that's messed up, you know. And she said, I shouldn't be going around to see her, take him to see her Christmas time since she doesn't acknowledge him as her grandbaby because he's half black. And uh, she was talking about how she was having problems finding a job. And just talking about life like a lot of people do when they sit in that first seat by the driver. A lot of people sit there because they want to see. But there is a, 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 a community um of people that sit there because they want to talk to the driver. And I'm a very uh, um, approachable driver. Like if you sit down in the seat near me and you start crying, I ain't going to just keep going like nothing happened. I'm going to be like, hey, well, why? what's wrong with you? You know, why are you crying? It's going to get better. You know, I, I have a, that's my natural disposition to cheer people up so, or, or investigate and find out what's wrong. So, but you can only do that, but so much on the bus when you're driving the bus and doing your job. So, but she was talking and next thing I know, the little baby spilt some water on the coloring book. Mind you, these are Dollar Tree store coloring books. Nothing special, nothing fancy. <laughs> and even if they were, what she did next didn't warrant. Um, I feel like I'm going to cry. Hold on. Didn't what she did next didn't warrant that, you know, um, at all. She uh, took her hand and back slapped that baby so hard that he rolled out of the seat and in he hit my fare box and 
bounced off and rolled into the stairwell. And I will never forget the thud, the cry, the scream, the blood, how it gushed out his forehead when he when he went down the stairwell. I don't know if he hit his head on the fare box or if it went he hit his head on the stair or the side of the bus. But when he went down, blood started gushing out everywhere. And uh, I immediately picked up the, uh, I immediately hit the computer. We have an emergency button. And I hit the emergency button to call the ambulance and the police. And um, and, I, and, and I picked up the phone and had the phone while I was ready. I had the phone waiting and I was turned that way. And um, people were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And uh, you sh and some ladies was going off in the background. You ain't supposed to be hitting no baby like that. And uh, I mean, it was just pandemonium. I can't describe to you the pandemonium. And so she got up and she got the baby. He was wailing. He was crying. And she had him in his arm. And it was blood gushing out everywhere. I said, ma'am, our ambulance is on the way and the police. And she said, oh, please don't call the police. She said, I've been under a lot of stress lately. And he was, she was starting to calm him down, but he was crying. And she was calming him down. She said, I've been under a lot of stress lately. And I didn't mean to hit him that hard. And I said, uh, obviously, and I freaked out. I was freaking out. I said, obviously, you hit him before. He's got all these bruises and stuff all over him. She said, no, no, he's just a rough little boy. And uh, he's rough and he plays rough. And he's just a rough little boy. And, and those... Don't, those scars on him don't have anything to do with me. Please, bus driver, don't call. Please let me out the bus. And the bus doors was closed. Mind you, I, I skipped over a part, y'all. My bad. My bad. When the baby, when she slapped the baby, he rolled into the fare box, bounced off the fare box, and rolled into the stairwell. I pulled the bus over and put the four-way flashers on it and, and hit the button on the BDS, the bus dispatch system computer has a button that you can push. And we also have an emergency button. But I, I push that button to call 911 and then dispatch calls you back and then you tell them what services you need. And then I had the phone in my hand and then I, I was talking to her. I was talking to them. People was, oh, hell no. People was getting off the bus. She said she was getting off the bus uh, and, and, and I had closed the doors. I had closed the doors because people had got, people were getting off at that bus stop. Some people just got out the bus to smoke a cigarette. And... um so they got out of the bus and they were smoking cigarettes and stuff. And the baby, she had calmed the baby down. And uh, she was saying, please, bus driver, can we just go? She said, I, you know, she was, say I can't remember everything she was saying, but she was saying that she was sorry and that she was under a lot of stress. And she had just came from her mom's house and her mom don't like that her baby's half black. And she's just under a lot of stress and she can't find a job. And she didn't mean to hit him that hard. It was an accident. And she said she's getting off the bus, open the door. And I said, no, I'm not opening the door till the police come. And you really can't do that. So somebody wanted back on the bus that was smoking a cigarette. So I had no choice but to open the door. I, I, I lost that argument. I opened the door and then she got off the bus and, and put the baby in the stroller and, and was running up the, uh, running up the street. By the time the police got there, she was long gone. I asked TriMet, I mean, not I asked TriMet, but I asked the, the, the police went rolling up the street to find her. I don't know if they ever found her. I asked TriMet if they heard anything. They hadn't. I hadn't seen her again ever. And I wish I could tell you that she went to jail. She got some anger management classes, some parenting classes. She's got some help that she needed. She got some all the help that she needed. And in the end, she became a great mother and they healed and grew together or that they took the baby away from her and he got ended up landed in a, in a loving foster home. I wish I could tell you one of two of those things, but I can't. And I will always wonder what happened to that black and blue baby. And that's why I call it black and blue baby. I'll never forget him. Like I could close my eyes and see his face today. So I didn't cry. Yay. So thank you for watching Word From Wise, Bus Stories, Flowers in the Street. That was Black and Blue Baby episode 19.
I'll see you on the next video, which will probably be me playing the guitar, my attempt at playing the guitar. Y'all said, yeah, I, some of y'all said y'all going to watch my, my progress and watch me grow through prayer and scriptures to play. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to play. <laughs> okay. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.